and welcome to Fast Girl Speaks. Today is a day. It's a Wednesday. It's in May. How are you? It's episode 240 something. Five sounds good. How's that sound to you? Pretty good, I bet. Okay? Okay. I'm Amy Beth, also known as The Fat Squirrel on Ravelry and The Fat S-Q-R-R-L on Instagram. And now I just realized that my head is crooked. What's happening? It's not really crooked here. Hey, let's, let's, let's hang out together. Wanna hang out? Wanna, wanna hang out? You wanna be, you wanna be friends? You, you, yep, you, you wanna be my friend? Let's, let's hang out. Okay, let's try this again. Ugh. Oh, we're still crooked. Why, I know, right? You're like, um, most people would probably have this done before they talk to us. Not feeling great okay so like settle settle down that's a little the other way right we could do it this way so it's very avant-garde podcast today I don't understand it looks straight and then I move it, and it okay we're gonna go with that we're gonna go with that <laughs> oh my gosh how are you Gus is trying to eat all of the yarn in the entire world and all of the fleeces. I am not going to turn my phone off because my doctor is supposed to call and I need to be available for that phone call. Oh my gosh, right? I mean, stop it, Gus! So this week's episode is going to have knitting. And it's going to have some shameless self-promotion. It's going to have me fighting Gus quite a lot, as from what I can tell. He's feeling quite ornery. And it's going to have Marilyn Sheevan will haul and talk. I did buy a fleece. Full disclosure. So many of you saw me and were like, oh my gosh, you don't have a fleece. I was like, that's because I already took it to the car. It's the first thing I bought. Okay. Okay. Um, and I'm very happy with it, but I want to talk about it, I think, in its own episode. So that'll be happening hopefully later this week. We'll talk about that. Um, I, but I want to get, I'm washing it now, so I want to get samples washed, and then I want to get, well, actually, I'm going to try to get most of it washed, and then try to get some of it carted up, and maybe even a tiny bit sample spun. We'll see how that goes. We'll see how far ahead I am. Um, so, yeah. Do you want to do knitting first again? Okay, let's do knitting first, and then we will just like, my plan is to talk for a ridiculously long time, but full disclosure, I am having some back problems. So I don't know, we'll see how I do. Also, these dogs are kind of driving me crazy today. They're driving me crazy. This is good stuff. Did you see his tongue? He has a freakishly soft tongue. It's really weird. When he licks your toes, it's kind of a upsetting. It's a little crazy. Look at him. He looks so bad again. <laughs> Ewok. Okay. Okay. Andy, do you want to say hi since I don't actually have to pick you up? Andy doesn't like to be picked up. I mean, she will be picked up, but she doesn't like it. Here you go. Do you want to say hi since we're on the floor and you're not like being picked up in the sky? She's still like, no, I don't like it. <laughs> because this is what happens. Okay, just so you know that I love Andy. I just don't pick her up often because she's just not a fan. She's not a fan. And she just turned her back on me. It's like, how dare you pick me up in front of that other dog? Don't let it know that I have weaknesses. You weren't weak, Andy. I just picked you up. Gosh. Okay, so first off, um, I'm knitting on some mercury socks, and I did get a little bit done. Not a lot. I'm like the slowest sock knitter ever. But here's the first one. So this is on the round. This is her, I think she calls it her signature sock, and I really love this base. It's a merino, but it's it's it feels very similar to the Coriodale nylon. Um, so it has that toothier feel to it, but I'm pretty sure she, it's listed as merino. Um... I mean, I do have a skein, but I can just look at Oh, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Oh, sweet Bippy. Okay. Yes, it's, oh no, this is not hers. 
I know why I thought that one was hers, but it's not. And now, I don't have anything candy. But anyway, it's a merino, I think. I'm pretty sure. Oh my gosh, this podcast is terrible already. I apologize. Okay. Okay. Um, but I really do like her signature sock here in quite a bit. God, stop eating things. Oh my God. It's like having toddlers. Um, so I really like it. And this, of course, this is a sock for my mamma. So they're super skinny looking because she has super narrow feet. Um, but it's just like a nice little, um, there's two different rows of like a lace. So it's a total of five repeats, five row in the repeat. Um, but it's real basic. I would, I, this, these are, um, carbons double points in a size zero. I would actually like to try a sharper double point on this because it has some knit two togethers and some slip slip knits, which is not bad, but the dub, the carbons are rather blunt. And I think it would just be a little bit speedier if I had a point here needle. Um, so I'm going to just try to look through my stash and see if I have a pointier needle. I love the carbons double points. I'm usually a, a magic loop knitter. I do that's kind of my default, but every once in a while I get a hankering for, for double points and I do really love the carbon, the carbons. Um, I knit on zeros usually. And so the strength of the carbon is really great, especially in that tiny gauge because these have, I mean, I've used these for a couple of years and there's no indication of bending and most metal needles. I have problems with that. Even though I'm not a tight knitter, I think I, I'm just an animal and I just probably grip things firmly basically like a Hulk you know it um but so yeah so there's that and I really do like her yarn quite a lot I just don't always choose socks to do my knitting on the majority of my knitting this week has gone into my um Ducat cardigan and that's a pattern by Kate Davies I am knitting mine with night shades in the insomnia colorway. So this is a woolen spun Cormo and wool. So it's got Cormo and something else, maybe something else's. Um, and it's a DK weight. So it's 250 yards for a hundred gram skein. Did I say this is the insomnia colorway? It just has a slight bit of, of olive in the, f in the fleck. You can kind of see it there, but it reads visually as just a warm black basically. And I'm on the neckline, y'all. What? That's right. I did make it shorter than the pattern indicated. Um, but I will do like a final, I think I'm going to start trying to do final object, um, like bonus episodes when I finish a larger project like a sweater. Um, so I do plan on doing that and giving you more info, especially after I get it blocked and get some um, pictures and all that good stuff. Um, but so yeah, I'm totally on the neckline. I went ahead and I did shorten the, had I decided that I was shortening it when we talked to each other last? I think I had, I think it was onto the sleeves. Yes, I was. Um, so I definitely did make it shorter than the pattern it has indicated. Um, and I went with a full length sleeve. So it's, it's actually a little bit longer than bracelet length. Um, but it's very easy to turn up if I so decide because this got quite a beefy little cuff. Um, and so, I don't know, we'll see how that goes. But of course this yarn is just lovely to work with and I can't wait to see how it block, how it washes up and blocks out. I think it's gonna be super fun and I'm very excited. Um, my painted portrait dress, I have a, a painted portrait dress that's, it's like a tunic, it's not a dress. Although, it was, I got kind of warm at Maryland sheep and wool and I almost took my pants off, threatened to, to several people. I almost made my tunic a dress, it was very close. I even had decent looking underpants on. It was very tempting. They're Wonder Woman. It's very tempting to remove my pants. Really wasn't hot. Outside, or inside the barns, it was like very moist. And then like all of the humans breathing. And I wasn't feeling my super best. So it was like, oh, what were we talking about? Oh, but so it's like a dark, it's basically one of those where the warp and the weft are two different colors. And so one or the other is black and the other one is an olive green. So I think it's like the inverse of this color combination. So that's my plan is to wear it with that. 
and other things. But that is my, that's in the forefront of my brain. Um, so yeah, so I'm working, I'm almost done. I mean, like what? I think I have like two more, I have two more rows and I'm binding off. So I'm excited about that. I know I'm just holding up a big black blob like it means anything to you. Whatever. It's totally fine. And I totally have, I'm going to say totally a lot, apparently. It's the meds. I have two extra skeins um, of the nightshades. That's gory. Why is that in there? So I totally have enough to do, um, to be like a, sec a color in a... Um, What is that dang, the cropped short sleeve sweater that I've talked about 7,000 times? The Soldatna, I just could not remember. So I have enough that I could do that. I could make it like one of the colors of the Soldatna, even one of the like two main colors. Um, so that is very tempting, very tempting indeed. And then I cast on an Ursa cardigan. Oh, that's right. I had thought about it before. Okay, so did we talk about that at all? The Ursa cardigan came out. It's a cropped long sleeve cardigan. It's Aran weight though. And it looks so cute in the um, the product photos and what have you in that like just a really fluffy Aran weight yarn. However, I knew that if I was knitting something, I would want to at least have the option of wearing it relatively soon. And so, so here's this like dreamy, creamy version. Right? With this like super cute half brioche rib detail. So it makes it even plumper and juicier. I love plump and juicy things. Um, but I was, so I was like, I needed to, I wanted to knit it in um, a linen tape because you can get a linen tape and an Aran weight. Um, Quince and Company has one, but I also found this. This is Stacy Charles Fine Yarns Ariana, and it is also a linen tape. So if you don't, if you never used a tape yarn, it's basically um, like I cord yarn. So they they basically pr knit an I cord out of a fine linen. And then it knits into this tube, which essentially flattens out through processing. Um, so, right? How fun is that? This is color 11. And this was on a closeout at Webb's. So, I got it at a fairly discounted rate. And so, I've cast on. Oh, so, I was um, wanting to make it out of this linen tape, but I wasn't sure. Because, let me see if I can get a good picture where you can see the neckline a bit better. The neckline on the Ursa is quite open. It's quite a wide neckline. Well, you can kind of tell it in this photo. You can see that it's just kind of, just like almost hitting on right at the bra strap area or even to the outside of the bra strap. And I was afraid, I wouldn't be afraid of it in a woolen, like a light woolen spun wool for me. Um, but I was concerned with the linen that, you know, it wants to drape so much and it's it's heavy and it has no memory. Linen has its own complications. But, so I was hesitant. I had purchased it, convinced I was gonna do it. And then I did a swatch and then I was seized by self-doubt. But then, at Maryland Sheep and Wool, guess who I met? Completely by accident. <laughs> um, the designer, whose name is, and I am sorry, I'm going to butcher her name because even though I met her in person, I didn't think her to ask. I did not think to ask her if she could pronounce her name for me. Uh, but I'm going to just stab that it's Jacqueline Seaslack. Probably so. Um, but she was wearing hers that she knit out of a linen tape. And I'm, I'm, I didn't read this, this passage at all, but I'm pretty sure this is the Quince, the Quince. Yeah, it's with Quince Kestrel, which I have not used before. So I can't speak to how close this is, a, you know, similar, how similar this is to the Quince, but, and it was super cute on her and it didn't look like there was any issue with the neckline. Can we just discuss how dreamy she is? 
She's super dreamy, y'all. Sorry for the pause. The UPS driver came. We all had to have mental breakdowns. So anyway, I met her at Marilyn Sheep and Wool. She was, um, she was at a booth with samples of her sweater and samples of herself. So that was super groovy and a totally unexpected treat. Um, so I cast on. <laughs> so even though I would told myself that I was going to wait to cast on until I finished that um, that Ducat, I didn't wait. I'm, I'm not good at waiting for things. I'm not good at any sort of like self-limiting behaviors. Not good at them. So yes, I'm here so far. And I'm knitting on eights, which is amazing. It's been so long since I've done anything. Oh no, nines. Nines I'm knitting this on. Gus! Gus really likes the linen tape. Let it go, you son of a gun. Oh, you are such a bad boy. He's the worst. Oh, Gus Gustav. You are the baddest baby. Okay, let me put that away before anything else happens. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about it. Hooray! I am knitting my upper bust size. This one is written with short row bust shaping. Um, so that is very awesome. I guess I should talk more about the pattern. I don't know if I really talked about it before or not. Um, but my, see here, let's, that is not that, that is that. So sizing is written from 34 inches to 66 inches. That's a finished bust, bust measurement, um, indicated with two to six inches of positive ease. So, but what I am actually knitting is the size 50. My upper bust is a 46 measurement. So I'm actually knitting the size 50. Um, and then I will add, I will do my normal, it's a raglan style. So I'll probably do some extra increases for the bust on the front side and for the arms. Okay. And then I probably will also add the short rows because I did find that I, I do think that for a crop sweater for me, I am like a size G, H, I, depending on whether you're doing American, European, English, whatever, whether it's a day where I consumed sodium. I mean, who knows, whatever. But I think I will, uh, I do think it's good in my size for me, to, for with my bust size, to add extra short rows in the bust. I did some on the Ducat. I probably should have done even just a few more. Um, so I will still be doing those short rows, but I will also give myself a little bit extra width um, for my bust as well. Okay. Okay. See, what else did I say? Okay, so optional horizontal darts for cup sizes C, D, E, F, or G, H. Right? How cool is that? Um, so yeah, now I'll get to unwind this. Thanks, Gustav. You're the best. He's, he's definitely come back over to help me with this linen tape. He's such a helpful boy. So I'm really excited about that. I definitely do want to make one um, in like a, well, obviously I'll see how this fits. I think it's going to do well though. Uh, but I do want to make one though in like an eco wool um, or something like that that has a lot of like loft um, and bouncy memory because I think that'll be super cute. Right. And so snuggly. Gus, if you chew this, I will murder you. Okay, I won't murder you but I will be very angry. Okay. So I should really just abandon this, but I can't help it. <laughs> so let's talk about Marilyn Sheep. <laughs> okay, first thing. Okay, let's actually talk about this first. Um, I received some yarn to try out, which I'm super excited about. Now, I usually do not accept yarn for review. Uh, because I know that I am not always good at knitting what I should knit instead of what I want to knit. But I was very excited. This is Mad Fuzzy. And they do a yarn that is raised, milled, and hand-dyed in Maine. 
So this one is 80% Frisian wool, 20% Firestar nylon. And this one is 100% East Frisian wool. They're both two plies. Um, so I'm really excited to try these out. I really, A, dig both of these colors so much, right? Like, look at that. And even though this one has the Nylon Firestar, it's not especially noticeable. I mean, you can see it, but it doesn't like sparkle crazy. And then look at this one. Oh, I love an olive and a dirty eggplant color. And then you throw gray in there, like check it out. So I'm really excited to try these out. So our base is local, Mad Fuzzy's ex exciting sheep breeds, unique fibers, and hard-wearing yarns from shepherd to shearer, mill to dye pot. We keep it close to home. So yeah, I'm really excited to try out their yarn. And I'll let you know how I'm liking it pretty soon. Come on, camera. Stop looking at my face. Stop looking at my face, camera. There you go. So yeah. So this is finger right. I don't think I said that. But every 100 gram screen is 400 yards. So there is that, which is very exciting. Oh my gosh, this yarn barf is making me stressed out. I'm not even gonna lie to you. <laughs> okay, so then another kind of um, administrative thing. I had some cutesy Kirsty bags at Maryland Sheep and Wool Needles Up. So thank you so much to everybody who came by to Needles Up. It was awesome. It always is. It is the most lovely way to do a weekend of wool. Like, it's just the best. That's all there is to it. Um, so it was from noon to six in Columbia, Maryland. And I will not lie to you. When I hear that time frame, I'm like, oh my gosh, that sounds so long. But it flew by. We were just that perfect level of busy the whole time where like I could grab a drink of water or something, um, but never felt like crickets. You know, it wasn't like, oh, what have I done? And yet it wasn't so... Okay, I have no idea what we're talking about. Needles up. <laughs> but before I talk any more about that, let's do the actual administrative part, which is that I had a bag that was very popular. It was cutesy and cursy. So if you don't want to see curse words, like fast forward or mute me for a few minutes. Um, I don't actually have the samples because I was lucky enough to sell out and I am not I just don't want to sew for a minute, so I didn't sew samples up for you. <laughs> but they were very popular, and so I, did, I said that I would do a pre-order. So May 24th at 9 p.m., so that's a Friday, at 9 p.m., I will have pre-order listings up. Now, they will be a limited pre-order because I am a um, Super Summer Knit Together is happening in July, so I'll be needing to start to uh, prepare for that. But I will have pre-orders, and I will try to have them as like a four-week, like no more than four weeks. Um, so there will be sock size in this super cute um, array of fucking sunshine fabric. Right. How sweet is that? I'll try to get it upright for you. So there's that one. And then in the large wedge size, I have fuckity fuck buck. So I'll do two of those. I actually have some more fabrics coming um, that I'm excited about, but I'll pre I'll um, roll those out at the Super Summer Knit Together Market. Um, and they're very cute, also cursy. But I will make these available as a pre-order May 24th. So they'll be basically more of a sewn to order um, because I will have a limited quantity um, but I will have those May 24th in the shop. Okay. So that was Needles Up. It was super lovely. Tufts Woolens was there. They're so enjoyable. They have a new lemon scent. It's delicious. Lemon Charch. Um, the La Classy Squid was there. She had beautiful, crazy things. Fiber Nip was there. Her self-striping crab. So cute. And of course... Legacy Fiber Arts. Well, gorgeous yarn. 
but it was so great. And if you stopped by, I really appreciate it. It was lovely to talk with you. We talked about stuff all over the board from like student loan forgiveness to fat stuff to, I mean, we just talked about everything. So it was awesome getting to talk with a lot of you and getting to visit. I really appreciate it. Um, so yay. Thanks. It was a very successful show for me. So I'm very thankful for it. So super fun. I left from Indy the day before Needles Up, so on Thursday, and um, just drove out to Maryland. It's about, it's like on paper, it's an eight hour drive. So like stopping to get gas, things like that. It's like about an eight and a half, a little bit longer drive. Um, so a long drive, but totally doable for me in a day. And I had a really good time. Um, I had really great traffic luck at one point google rerouted me because apparently there was some traffic weird traffic in west virginia what what is up west virginia the last time we went last year when i went there was crazy traffic in west virginia there's like seven people in west virginia there's eight people in indiana but there's only seven in west virginia what are y'all doing what's happening anyway so i got rerouted um along the old state road 40 which i did pick up again after i got at the pennsylvania turnpike and then got or, or toll road i don't know that's actually the pennsylvania turnpike it's one from pittsburgh into west virginia um so but i got to drive on like back roads which was really fun and enjoyable and like very freeing because when you have the navigation on like you know you're not worried like oh gosh where am i it just trust google mostly she takes where you need to go everyone's supposed to do something crazy but she's not done anything crazy to me so I was just driving through the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania on like two lane roads, but there were grades. So like they, they had the, the grade lane for trucks. So there was never like a like, like feeling like things were too congested. It was really nice. And then the state, the, the, the section of State Road 40 from the Turnpike or whatever it is, Route 43, onto Route 68, which is the beautiful through Maryland, up hill and down dale. You go over the Eastern Continental Divide. Why is there not a bigger sign for that? I couldn't even find it on the way back home, by the way. Anyway. So, but that section of Route, Old State Route 40, or it's called the National Road. I just, by the way, I didn't even know anything about the National Road. Do you know about the National Road? But of course, once my partner pointed out to me, like once he named it as the National Road, then of course, Azure, it basically is like the same route as Route 70, the big east-west route. And so when you're on 70, which is what I am on for the majority of that um, journey, like you see signs for Route 40, like every third exit is an exit for Route 40 because Route 40 just kind of does this across Route 70. But that section from the Pennsylvania Turnpike into Maryland on Route 68 is gor a gorgeous and be really cool. There are a lot of like um, old mom and pop, like no tell motel kind of places, like old old vacation spots um, that are kind of like dilapidated in some cases, but in some cases have been revitalized. Um, but I got to pa for one thing, I need to know more about these ovens. What is that? I don't know if they're just like limestone kilns, but there's all these furnaces that you pass, which is the sign for like such and such furnace. And I'm like, what? I don't know that they're lime, I don't know if they're lime kilns or if it's just like part of that like Zanesville pottery, like are there clay deposits there? I haven't had a chance to check that out yet. <gasps> By the way, did you know this is a thing? Okay, so last time when I went to New York Sheep and Wool, there were so many of those like historical marker signs um, that I wanted to read, but of course couldn't because we were in a moving vehicle. And I always see them, you know, not just on that trip, but lots of other places and want to know what they say. But you can't, unless you stop, you can't usually read them all. There's too much text on them, especially if you're driving. Well, there's an app for that. I even said when we were in New York, I wish there was an app that would like put me on a map and show me all the historical markers around me. Now what's it called? All it says on my thing is markers. But if you Google, or if you if you go on the App Store, I don't know if it's on it's on iOS definitely has it, but I don't know about the other versions. Um, but it's totally an app where you can put in your location, or you know you can like hone in on your location or whatever location you want. For example, say you're driving on Route 70 through Zanesville, and you want to know the historic locations or what this historical sign means or what it says, and it gives you all of the markers 
So you can just click on them and see what they say. So the green ones don't give you as much information. Usually they are um, historical p architecture points, uh, but they don't necessarily have like all the information of those like black historical signs. But like, for example, this one is a building, 1850. It gives the Greek revival architecture style. Its historical function was domestic single dwelling, and that's what its current fun function is. Um, so it'll give you that information, but then if you click on the red ones, they are usually the actual historical sign, and oftentimes there will be a picture of the historical sign along with the text that is on the sign. How fun is that? So if you find yourself driving along route Old State or State Road, the National Road, gosh, I can't even say it right, and you're like, what is all this historical stuff happening? But you can't look at your phone because you're driving then you can just go and retrace your route and be like, oh, that was the Fort Necessity, the first battle of the French Indian War that you passed. Did you know that? I didn't know that. What's happening? That was really cool. So yeah, that was super awesome. And then there was this giant like old school resort up on this hill, like a white shining beacon of cool old stuff and I was really excited about it and I was like because again I'm in the middle of nowhere and by the way I did because I thought well maybe I'm actually not in the middle of nowhere maybe like there's like a big like suburb like there's a big metro area that's just like removed enough that I'm not seeing it no I was in the middle of nowhere between Pittsburgh and West Virginia somewhere nowhere y'all and so there's this huge resort above the hill, and I'm like, what is that? Because it looks really old. Okay, spoiler, it's not. It's totally from the 70s. But I did get to learn all about, like, the Pittsburgh, like, coal barons who, like, summered and vacationed in the middle of nowhere between there and West Virginia. And had, like, big hunting reserves, like they were English or something. They think it's like Sherwood Forest in the middle of Pennsylvania. It's ridiculous. But there's this giant resort, and I was like, what is that? That's so cool. It's like a Tudor architecture style, so I'm thinking, like, oh my gosh, I've, like, happened upon, like, this, like, this, like, solarium from the 19 knots, and, like, it's gonna be this cool, like, oh, everyone here for typhoid, or whatever. No, it was still a build of 70s. Blech. Boring. I should have known better. There's a giant casino right down the road. And again, in the middle of nowhere. Whatever, y'all. America's weird, but it was still fun. Okay. So I really enjoyed that part of the trip, even just the driving part. It was totally fun. Listen to some cozy mysteries. The best. It was super fun. And then, so we did Needles Up, which I already talked about, which was wonderful. And then to so the actual Maryland Sheep and Wool itself. So I got there early, got my fleece. I'll talk about the fleece in a different episode. I do want to apologize. I really had every intention. There was a podcaster meetup on Saturday at 1.30. And I had every intention of going. All day I had every intention of going. And at 12.30 I decided not to go. <laughs> I've never done that before. I've always gone to the meetups and things like that that I've, that I've known about. Um... But I do, so I apologize. I did not mean to tell people I would be somewhere and then not make it, but I actually injured my back like two weeks. I had an intense sleep injury, you know, those notorious sleep injuries where I got my back really out of whack from sleeping in a crazy position for several nights in a row without realizing it. Whatever. My lower back is not happy. But so I, I actually was really up until about two days before I left for Maryland Sheeple, I was, or for Needles Up in Maryland Sheeple, I was actually quite afraid I wasn't going to make it. I was in a lot of pain um, and like almost not able to walk. <laughs> That's not good. Um, but like the clouds parted and everything was fine and I actually was, I did really well on my drive. I mean, I just had a little bit of discomfort, but nothing bad. I was able to set up for Needles Up and break down, I had no issues. And really did really well at the actual festival itself until about like the last hours there. And then suddenly like 
it just kind of started to descend and that combined with just being kind of exhausted from like all of the like, interacting with everybody, having such a good time, I just kind of hit a wall about 12.30 where if really what I should have done is gone and found somewhere to just like sit and be quiet for a moment and that would have been okay. But because my back was being weird, I was afraid to. Um, because it, it's like that kind of back thing where you can get stuck. Like, you know what I mean? Like you can get down and not be able to get back up kind of a thing. So I was like, hmm, do I want to have to have the livestock carrier come and get me off the lawn in Maryland Sheep and Wool? Or do I want to just maybe not make the promise I made to people and be, not be there? And I decided to not be there. So, and I'm, I'm totally, I'm fine. Like, I'm totally fine. I mean, not fine. Like, I'm dealing with it but I don't want I mean it's just a normal part of everyday life but I just wanted you to know that I do feel bad about it not like bad like oh my god but just like I would not normally do that if there were not extenuating circumstances so I apologize if I told you I would be there and then I wasn't for you I was there for lots of other people throughout the day but um so do you want to apologize for that but I had a great time other than that. It was lovely. It was super nice. I saw so many of your faces. I got to chat with so many people. I don't know how I didn't see some of you. How is it that when you're at a festival, I don't know if you've noticed this, when you're at a festival, it seems like you see the same 20 people like 40 times. And then there'll be somebody who's like, oh my gosh, I didn't even see you. And I was like, I didn't see you either. How's that even possible? The spheres just did not interact. But I had a grand old time. Let's see, do you want to see what I bought? I really do. I really like Maryland Sheep and Wool. It doesn't feel as claustrophobic to me um, as Rhinebeck. And I've talked to several people about why that is. I don't think it's because there are any fewer people there. Um, but the way this, the festival is struck, like the way the, it's laid out, I think that is the reason I don't feel quite as overwhelmed by humans there. Um, New York Sheep and Wool kind of has like one major thoroughfare. Now there are offshoots, but there's one major like channel of traffic. And when you're in that channel of traffic and because it's also on a hill, you can see all of the humanity. It can, it really, there, it can feel overwhelming. Now it doesn't bother me too much because it's still outside and I can still see like if I need to not be near this many people, I can go over here and just an for me outside is, is easier to handle when there are large crowds of people. Um, but Maryland doesn't have that. It has like two larger thoroughfares and just, I don't know, something about how it's laid out. I don't know that I don't know the, the number of humans that are in each place at each time, but I think it's comparable because the number of vendors and things like that seems comparable. Um, but it doesn't feel as overwhelmingly crowded as New York Sheep Oval. So, I really like it. It's beautiful. The area is beautiful. I've talked about that several times. Um, but it's just nice. And even the weather really was threatening to be uncooperative for us. And I know that it did rain on Sunday for folks. Um, but it was still lovely. I had a grand old time. Um, so, let's talk about stuff that I purchased. And then I've, I've said this before too. I'll say it again. Um, the shearers are awesome. I did not watch them this year. Um, I can't sit down on a hillside right now. <laughs> and the um, the people who do the sheep herding, the dog herding, they're amazing. So there's like lots of extra educational information or educational opportunities. There's tons of sheep for folks to see. It's just an all around really fun festival. I highly recommend it. Okay. But here are the things I purchased. So the rest of the show will just be things I purchased because I consume. I'll talk about my fleece in another episode. There's something, I don't know what is going on outside, but it's crazy. So I purchased this fellow. My grandparents really super duper love bluebirds. So there's this, uh, it's not for them, but it just reminded me of them. Um, so it's an oil can with this like super charming carved bluebird on it. How cute is that? I totally dig it. 
And I apologize, I should have had his card handy, and I know that I put it in my bag, um, but I'm not immediately able to lay my hand on it. So if I can find it, I will put that information. Oh, I think it's, I think it is Mulberry Hill Farm. I'm pretty sure that is who this is from. I'm saying it, not even sure. Um, but he had a super cute goat um, that was, oh, so cute. It's very tempting. It's very hard not to buy pur purchase two. Okay. okay. And of course, Hobbledy Hoy is winding down her business, so I had to go visit her booth. Um, so I bought these. These are winter birch battlings, which are Polworth and Tussa Silk. Aren't those lovely? She's always done a, such a beautiful job. And it's, she and her mother are just delightful human beings. But um, Liz is going on to um, study to be a high school English teacher. So she's going to be amazing at that. Lucky kids of the future. Um, but so I had to go snag some stuff from her even though I need wool. I need a whole head. Whatever. It's very attractive and beautiful. And then I also um, wanted to purchase a skein of Into the World. I had another skein of this that I purchased at New York Sheep and Wool, um, but I wanted to use them together for my um, Soldatna cro crop. So I'm not sure this is either going to be the main color, if it's not too stripey, or it will be like the um, the hem and cuffs color. Um, so we'll see how it goes. But I wanted to get another skein of that. So this is her Kettle Dye DK in the Walla Walla colorway. It's 100 grams, 230 yards. So yay, that not that just so rich and luscious? So attractive. And then also in yarn, I purchased this. Um, this is from Utopia. And this is her sustainable wool, oh, excuse me, sustainable DK. It is a Merino Rambouillet Tarhi Coriadale blend. And it's 260 yards for 100 grams. So it is basically a DK. And you can see it's like a woolen spun. I don't know that it says it's woolen spun, but it definitely has that look. Our wool is sourced from happy, grass-fed, sassy sheep from the western Wisconsin region. Our yarn is processed and dyed using organic and environmentally sensitive methods, oils, and soaps. So she had a little sample. This is apparently a new base for her. She had a little sample knit up, and I really dug it. And so I thought that I would either do um, Paula Eamon's Feasley's Upstairs Downstairs Cow, which I love quite a lot, or... I could use it with my insomnia on a winter soldatna or a fall soldatna or whatever we want to say. Okay, I can get this yarn out because Gus is asleep now. So yeah, right? Mm -hmm. So I have options. And then the last thing I purchased is um, I have seen several of the Serafina needle felting um, tutorials online, uh, but had never purchased one of our kits. And so when I saw that she was going to be in the vendor market, I definitely wanted to stop by. Um, so I couldn't decide. So I bought her donkey kit. Do you see him? He's going to go so well with my wool husband. It's out of control. Right. So I've never done a wire form the wire based one but then I saw the pony and I'm not even like a horse or pony person but do you see this fat bellied pony and his prancy merriment do you see him right. totally into him so I purchased him too But those are all of my purchases. Oh no, that's not a true. I have one more. And then I have, um, you know, my mug that's the dark colored mug that has the sheep on it. I have two mugs of sheep on it. Um, they are by Stanhope Pottery. 
which apparently they must be in Maryland, because she asked me if I was local, because they were going to be having a, um, a sale, which she said they don't normally do. Um, so if you are in that area, if you're in the D.C., Maryland area, you might just, and you're interested in their pottery, you might want to go on to their website and just get, actually, you know, I don't know that they have a website. I say that. I'm not sure that that's true. Uh, but there was something where you could get onto her mailing list. So maybe there is like a basic website, but not necessarily a purchasing website. Uh, but it is Stan Stacy Stanhope. And so I did purchase another piece from her. I love, I have a mug that is essentially this size that I use for my soups in the winter. And it's from, um, of all places... It's from Connor Prairie, and I love it so much. And I am just spoiled for the handled soup mug. And so when I saw this guy, I'll pretend that I immediately knew I needed to have him. But it was really between, like, four different ones at her booth. And I just love it. These transfers are so pretty. And yet still have so much character. Oh, so enjoyable, right? Please roll. So those are my purchases. I'm very pleased with all of my purchases. Oh, did I show you? I don't think I told you. I did tell you that Tuft is having um, a new, had a new scent at Needles Up. It was a lemon tart. It smells delicious. So she gave me a hand balm because she's super generous. And then a viewer brought me this one. It was actually quite nice because I stayed in a super sketchy hotel. Okay, it wasn't really super sketchy. Let me rephrase that. It was mildly sketchy. I stayed at a hotel in Frederick, Maryland, which is like half an hour west of the festival because to stay closer to the festival was like two times more expensive and it was just me. So like, I don't care that much. Um, in fact, I was originally planning on camping, but thank you to those folks who were like, uh, maybe don't camp there because it's kind of a bog. I'm glad I did not camp because while it was very charming to think about camping on my own, it we had very intense thunderstorms the few nights that I was there. And so I probably would have not enjoyed that so much by myself. I'll admit that I probably would not have enjoyed that. Also, what is up with their, have you been to their, their um, campground? It's so weird. Luckily there are satellite images. Thank you world. Um, because their campground is actually not in a state park. I guess because it's, you know, there's not as, it's an older area. The state park is, it's is like in lots of pieces and the campground is like actually a distinct piece, which looks like it's in the middle of like a suburban housing tract or like between two suburban housing tracts. It's so weird. Like if you look on the get the Google satellite imagery, there's like a campground. It's like kind of like teardrop shaped, not in the state park. So like that's kind of creepy to me. I don't know why. Because I feel like if I were like a murderer, I would probably go to a state park to murder people in tents, if that's what my really intent was. There's a lot of tents in that word, that word sentence. Like, I kind of feel like I would have really a trouble going to a state park to do all the murdering. But for some reason, just in my heart and in my gut, like it was much scarier that it was not within a state park. I don't know why. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. But in my head, it was scarier. Whatever. Because like this guy could just be like, eh, I feel like murdering today. And he could just like come over and do the murdering. Or like his friend. He wouldn't do it because he lives there. But like his son's um girlfriend's brother would be visiting and they'd be like oh my gosh there's a bunch of people over there to murder and then he could come murder us all and then go away and nobody would know in my head that's definitely what was happening so it seemed a little scarier to me by the way i've never been afraid of being murdered while camping i don't know why that where this came from all of a sudden I, clearly it's just from being alone which is weird uh, but in fact, one time I, I camped with a friend who had never camped before, who never murdered before. She's also never murdered, to my knowledge. Um, the first time I camped with her, she she had never camped before. She really was like, so how is it that you don't get murdered? And I was like, what? It didn't even occur to me. And now I'm like, oh, that's definitely the murder campground. <laughs> Psh. 
So I did not camp, which I am not upset about at all. But so I was in this kind of sketchy hotel and I really, like I pulled up the night that I was going to check in and it wasn't very, it wasn't super clear where the like the entrance to the motel was, which I know sounds weird, um, but there's like three entrances. Like they looked like there was like three entrances and I couldn't tell exactly which one was which. Um, and so I kind of like did a circle of the, the hotel and it's literally like Route 70 is like here. There's another fairly major route here. A hotel and then the Costco. Like it's like sandwiched between the Costco and the highway. Like, my room overlooked the scenic Costco. But the room was totally fine. Like, it was very nice. It was very well cleaned. In fact, I got very embarrassed because I kind of just wasn't expecting anybody. I'm not worldly, y'all. I mean, I'm pretty sure you know this from watching this show. But if you're new, I'm not worldly. And so I really thought in this, like, sort of sketchy hotel, I did not even think about housekeeping coming in. And then they did, and I felt so awful because I had just left my room like a sty. I mean, it looked like a bomb had gone off. They were probably like, who is this animal? I was so embarrassed. Oops. Bras everywhere. Like, I have 75 bras. Whatever, one of my bras is like 75 of other people's bras. Bras everywhere. Shoes everywhere. Again, I don't have a lot of shoes, but my shoes are really big. Just like explosion. Because, you know... Like, I got home from the vendor market on um, Friday and just was, like, eating a... Oh, my gosh! I went to get a burrito, because it's always my treat, right? I went to Chipotle, because it's, like, an easy... Just go pick it up. You can eat it there and come back to your room. Whatever. It's easy. I It's consistent. I know I'm not very adventurous, but whatever. When you're tired and you're not... Like, and you're by yourself, that's perfect. So I went and got my burrito. Actually, I went to one place to get my burrito and it was like an outside mall and there was a million people there and I was just like, oh hell no. I can't deal with this many humans. So I drove to a different Chipotle. <laughs> like good and human. I couldn't deal with those humans. So I drove to a different Chipotle. I went to that Chipotle, got my burrito, came home, came back to the hotel. I realized I did not get a fork to eat said burrito with. Now, it was not a burrito. It was a burrito bowl. So I'm literally in this hotel like... I've already had to ask the dude to like re-magnetize my key because like it got too close to my phone. Also, I think I just emit an, an EM field. So, like, that was complicated. So, I did not want to go down and ask him, like, if there was a fork somewhere. Because I just did not have it in my heart. Again, I'd already peopled enough. I don't know peopling. And so, I'm at the hotel, like, <sighs> so I tried to eat my burrito bowl with, like, a button. Not, like, a sew-on button, but, like, a like a merch button. Like, a fat squirrel button. And I'm like, oh, stop. So, then I had to, like, cut out a piece of the foil lid and use it as, like, a scoop. I was, like, the most fattest fat lady ever. I don't think I was wearing pants. I was not wearing pants. And I was just like scooping a burrito into my face. <laughs> I was hungry. I hadn't eaten anything all day. Even though a lovely viewer did bring me cold brew, blueberries, and carrots as a snack. How cute is that? Who gets that? Who gets that love? That's, I'm not w worthy of that love. Isn't that so cute and thoughtful? Oh my gosh, y'all, you're awesome. But anyway... By the time it was dinner time, I was rather, rather hungry. Gosh, why are you so cute? He's so cute when he's asleep. So I'm pantsless, foil scoop, eating the burrito. I don't know where this was going. What was I gonna talk to you about? I was talking to you about my sketchy hotel room. So it was totally fine, but it was definitely a situation where while it was a non-smoking room, somebody had clearly hotboxed in that bathroom and it smelled like an ashtray in the bathroom. Not bad enough for me to complain because like, hi, what do you expect when you get the cheapest hotel available in the entire state of Maryland? Um, but I was really concerned that I smelled like cigarette smoke and I kind of, I did to me, um, just from having my clothes in the room because when you set up, like, you know, it's hot and I'm like moving around a lot. So that heat just like is that. So I totally stuck my soap in my bra and 
and worn in my bra. So if you're ever in a pinch and you feel like you are ooky smelling, you can just pop a bar of tuft soap in your bra and it will keep you like, I'm sorry, but those um, essence, those, what are those, what are the oils? I can't think what they're called. Essential oils, they don't have anything on Martha. Just stick a bar of soap in your bra and it may not be five thieves or four thieves or seven thieves, whatever. Just stick it right in there. It will like ground you and make you not feel like you smell like a pack of cigarettes all day. It's pretty amazing. She doesn't even advertise that as an option, but it is. It's like an added bonus. She's like, this is for washing your hands or your woolens, depending on the one you buy. But I'm saying there are more, more ways to use her product. Essential oil diffuser when combined with maybe not a bra, but some sort of something to keep it close to your body. Probably work in a high-waisted yoga pant, thinking it would work just fine. You could put it in that useless pocket that's for a key. You could put it right in there. Be ready to go for the day. As somebody mentioned, I realized it, like, I totally forgot about it. If you're not a big boobed lady, and I'm not saying speaking for all big boob ladies, but I think you don't have quite as much sensitivity when you have big boobs. And so, like, you can put a bar of soap in there and completely forget it's there until the end of the night. And you t you go to, you're talking to somebody, and you're like, and then, and then you're like, what is that? Oh, that's that bar of soap I put in my bra four hours ago. <laughs> Proceeded to forget it's there. But as somebody mentioned, at least I didn't leave it in there until I took off my bra, because that would have been startling. Because you know you've taken off your bra and, like, something weird, like, popcorn has flown out or something. But this would have been a thud, and it might have been disconcerting. Oh Are we supposed to talk about anything else? I don't think so. Let's hope not. That seems good. <laughs> so again, <laughs> I'll have an update for a pre-order. I think it's May 24th, but now I've talked to you for so long. I'm no longer sure. It is in, oh, it is in fact May 24th, so that'll be 9 p.m., and those will be like a sewn to order, so they'll go out within the four week range, I anticipate. Um, but if you're interested, hop on over. I will have samples sewn by then for you so you can see exactly you know, what you should be getting. And I think if you're interested in cursey bags, if you want different sizes than those two and whatever, I, I do anticipate having more options in the future, um, but it'll be like in August probably later in July. Um, so if you're looking for a fix or you like those two styles, I'll make those available first. And then after Super Summer Knit Together in July, I will offer more styles and more fabrics. And there might be, just say there might be an audios bichachos option. Just say there might be. I think that's enough of my nonsense. <laughs> I'll talk.